So in this video, I'm going to be fitting a single mass flywheel clutch kit to my Subaru SH Forester 2010 model. It's the EJ253, which is the naturally aspirated engine. Why am I going with a solid flywheel? Okay, well, let's just start here by talking about what comes standard in these cars. And they have what's called a flex type flywheel. It's not a dual mass flywheel, it's a flex type flywheel. Looks the same from this angle, but when you flip it over to this side, you can see it's a two piece flywheel. You've got this other plate bolted to the back of the flywheel here. This is thinner than the, uh, the, the main flywheel material. And what this is designed to do is a dual mass flywheel will absorb sort of shock as uh, this way, you know, as it's twisting. Whereas this one here, it will absorb it sort of going backwards and forwards like that. You can just see that. So what's the deal with these and why am I replacing it with a solid flywheel? Well, there's a couple of reasons. One, the solid flywheel is much stronger. It's a single piece. It can be machined over and over again. These ones will wear out over time. And by wear out, I don't mean you can just fix it by machining it. I mean, this steel plate on the back is like a spring steel. So over time, it's going to lose its tension and your clutch is gonna start rattling, making all sorts of noises. Some places can machine these. The mob who did this, they'll guarantee it that it won't be a problem, but there's a lot of places who won't. And Exceedy themselves even recommend replacing the flywheel when it comes time to doing a clutch. So this flywheel is also about three kilos heavier than the single mass solid flywheel. So that's another reason. It's gonna get a little bit more of a snappy acceleration. Um, and yeah, it's just, uh, I'm just doing it for longevity, really. Um, and I also got the uh, the clutch kit at a really, really good price as well. So I don't need this one anymore. I'm probably going to sell it with the other um, Subaru parts that I got there. Um, so what I'm going to do, let's just open this up here. That's the part number, the Subaru, the uh, XCD part number. Now, here's a funny thing that I didn't know. These uh, Subaru clutches, genuine Subaru clutches, uh, actually come with Exceedy components. This is the pressure plate ah, that came out of the old one. And you can see on there, you just see that, it's got Exceedy on it. So, oh, that was pretty interesting. So, yeah, Exceedy kits are obviously very good for your Subarus. Now, so this is what comes in the kit. You've got some uh, new bolts because um, they're going to be longer than the ones that came off it. You've got a clutch installation tool. You've got some genuine Subaru little spring clips here. Uh, you have some lubricant for the throw out bearing. Uh, you have a new clutch fork because these have a tendency to fail as well. And again, that's a genuine Subaru part. So that there. You've got your spigot bearing in here you have the clutch disc and the pressure plate and your throw out bearing yeah so and beneath that of course the heart of the kit why we are using this is the solid flywheel yeah, hear that solidness. And of course you've got your paperwork in here. So, alrighty, let's throw this on. Okay, so we just put that on here. Alright, it's on. And have one of our bolts. Try and Find the bolt holes here. There you go. Now we're going to do some tricky stuff here because uh, we need to hold this flywheel while we're turning it. So we need to put something against this bolt here and against here. So this is where I go to my toolbox and see if I can find something handy to hold this steady. So what I've done here to hold the engine in place is I've just got myself a 19 mil spanner and I've put it against this dowel and against this little pin here on the flywheel. 
So that's just going to hold it in place um, while I torque it up. Now I'm just going to put some Loctite 243 on these bolts and zip them up quickly with the rattle gun and then torque them up to the specified torque which is 75 Newton meters. Now let's see how well my little makeshift engine holding tool works. Sweet, it worked. Now what I like to do as well is once you've torqued the, uh, the bolts up, just put a little mark on there. Oh, hi Mark. So it just in case you get distracted or something, um, you remember where you've gone. So you want to go sort of diagonal um, to each one. And this is the, uh, the bolt tightening sequence here. Okay, that's done. So you can see all the marks there. That's all been done up to 75 Newton meters. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to clean this face down with some brake cleaner, and then we're going to put the clutch disc and pressure plate on. And then we just push the spigot bearing or pilot bearing, if you wish, uh, a couple of names for it, and just sit that in the center there. And I just gently tap it in, just with a rubber mallet. Okay, so we've got that we've got that um, bearing in there, and you just want it to be flush with the uh, with the flywheel here. So now, again, now we'll just give that a bit of a clean down, and then we can fit the uh, fit the rest of the clutch kit. So once you've cleaned down your pressure plate, you take your clutch disc here. Uh, be careful not to get any oil or any grease on the friction surface. So see that it says TM side, transmission side. You want that facing the clutch pressure plate. So that goes on there like that. And then we get the uh, ye old clutch kit. And make sure that we line these up with the dowels. Also the part where you get your tool here. Okay, so proper way to use the clutch aligning tool is like this, as shown in the picture. And then you can just slide the pressure plate over the top. It makes it a lot easier. Uh, it was late when I was doing this and I had a bit of a derp moment and my brain just decided it was going to uh, leave the chat. So hence why I did it that way. So yeah, do it the way that it's shown in the picture. It's a lot easier. Okay, so that's all on there now, and ready to go in. Just make sure to double check everything, make sure it's all tight. So once you have a look in there, make sure that's all good. And then yeah, you're right to uh, right to drop the engine back in your car. So that's how you do a solid flywheel conversion to an EJ253 engine. It's not a really difficult job, but um, I mainly did this video because I couldn't really find any videos on a solid flywheel conversion for the EJ253. And there isn't really a great deal of information out there on the flexible type flywheels either. So I added a couple of links in the description if anyone was interested and wanted to do some further research on the subject. I hope this video was informative and if you've got any questions feel free to ask and thanks for watching.